Chapter 10, Quinny. I race those bully twins for that soccer ball. I twist around trees, hop on a giant rock, and dodge some lawn chairs. I zoom so fast, but they still get the ball first. Then they freeze and back up slowly, their eyes huge with fear. Disco and Cha-Cha are hopping toward them now, flapping and brick, 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 brick. Those bully twins are shaking because Disco and Cha-Cha's mother, whose name is Freya, but that's another story. They used to live around here and she once attacked those twins so bad that they're scared of all chickens now. Even these two scrawny mini ones who don't even know how to lay eggs yet. Brrr, says Disco, tilting a tiny beady eye. <laughs> brrr, brrr, says Cha-Cha, shaking her baldish feathery bottom. The twins scoop up their soccer ball and run for their lives. How'd you girls escape? I asked the chickens. Come on, let's get you back home. Hisses Walter the cat, who I didn't even know was here too. Oh, hello, Walter. Calm down. I won't hurt Cha-Cha. I know she's your favorite. Disco screeches at Walter to calm down too. And Walter screeches at Disco to mind her own business. Cha-Cha just stands there all innocent and fluffy balancing on her bony dinosaur starfish feet. Roop, roop, she says. Sorry, I don't have a treat, I tell her. Let's go home and find you some raisins. Roop, roop. Cha-Cha jumps on Walter's back and he walks her home. Disco follows them, whooping and roaring and screaming the whole way. I know an upset chicken when I see one. It's okay, Disco. You'll get raisins soon. We walk to Miss Porge's yard, which is noisy with hammering and arguing. Hopper's Grandpa Gooley, who doesn't even live here, by the way, is nailing wood pieces together into a rectangle shape on the ground. Miss Porge is standing over him with a sour face and her hands on her hip. Look at this little trio. <laughs> She's telling him to stop. He's telling her to stop telling him to stop. Grandpa Gooley, why are you and Miss Porridge arguing? We are not arguing. We're debating like civilized human beings. Right, Myrna? <clears throat> says Miss Porridge. My point is that not much of a chicken, that's not much of a chicken coop. Grandpa Gooley points toward the rickety shed that Miss Porridge wants to use for disco and cha-cha once they outgrow the screened-in porch coop. She already fenced in a little outdoor run for them by the shed. The shed is fine. Those chickens don't need a palace, she snaps. That skimpy poultry netting you use for the run won't protect them from predators, said Grandpa Gooley, and the shed is too small and it has poor ventilation. Winnie and I are perfectly capable of taking care of these chickens without a know-it-all man swooping in to save the day, says Miss Porridge. I'm not swooping, just trying to help, he says. Quinny, the Chalet de Poulet is officially under construction. I've got some extra work gloves if you'd like to lend a hand. Absolutely, Grandpa, but why did you just call it the Chalet de Poulet? Is that because the chickens poo a lot and also lay eggs? <laughs> chalet is another word for house, and Poulet means chickens in French, he says. But I like your explanation better. <laughs> He hands me some work gloves, and I bring him more pieces of wood, which he nails together to make the bottom frame of the coop. He says I'm such a good helper, I can help him again tomorrow if I want. I'll show you how to hammer a nail, he says. How's my grandson doing? They weren't home when I stopped by earlier. Oh, Grandpa Gooey, it's so sad. I haven't seen Hopper since yesterday. I mean, I saw his foot when they carried him inside just now, but his mom wouldn't let me in. Imagine that. I've really had the bad luckiest day ever. I'm sorry to hear that, Quinny. I'm not even kidding, it was the worst. Opera wasn't in school and now he's busy sleeping. And Victoria made fun of my life's bandana and stole my chickens. And she's planning an animal costume party that I can't go to. Plus, did I mention that my precious teacher, Miss Yoon, is gone and Miss Meanie Sub hates me? Ooh, sounds like you're feeling mighty low. What did my grandniece do th this time, Miss Porridge sighs, walking back over to us with a tray of minty lemonade, which is my favorite, except for the mint. Oh, Miss Porridge, I know you love her, and I don't want to tattle, but I told her I was going to write about taking care of the chickens for an assignment, 
And then Victoria stole that idea for herself without even telling me. I can't take it anymore. She's so awful, I wish she would switch schools. Well, that's a pretty extreme thing to say, Quinny, says Grandpa Gooley. Is it that bad? Part of me wants to tell Grandpa Gooley what Victoria is really like. The stares, the snappy, hateful comments, the bossiness. But then I look at Miss Porridge's sad face and I feel bad for complaining. Victoria is not all bad. She leaves me stickers at my locker. She gives me candy and braids my hair. She gives me fashion advice. I usually ignore it, but still it's nice of her. I'm sorry, Miss Porridge. I know it's not nice to say not nice things about people, even if they're not nice in the first place. I didn't mean to tattle on your pretty grandniece. Please don't give up on her, Quinny. Victoria needs some extra help to do the right thing sometimes. She could use more friends like you. you. Really think I could help her be nicer? I do, she said. But before you said we are what we are and no amount of conversation is going to change that. Miss Porridge does an almost smile now. She never does a full smile. I've only seen that once. Well, before I was talking about the chickens, people are usually more complicated than chickens. There's good and bad mixed up in all of us. I promise Miss Porridge I won't give up on Victoria, at least not yet. In exchange, I make her promise to let Grandpa Gooley come back and finish the Chalet de Poulet. Deal. She holds out her hand and we shake. <laughs> The phone rings in the house and Miss Porridge goes to answer it. She comes back a minute later and says, Quinny, your parents want you back home. Seems they need to talk to you. About what? I'm just guessing here, but it sounds like it's probably none of my business. <laughs> my stomach hurts. I think I know what, but I hope I'm wrong. Quinny, have a seat. Mom and Dad sit on the sofa, all calm and serious. What is it? Did the school call? It's not my fault. Honest, the meanie sub hates me. No, the school didn't call, says Dad, but maybe we should call the school. No, no, not at all. That would be a big waste of time, and I know how busy you guys are. Let's just get a move along, all right? Okay. Well, we wanted to talk to you alone while Piper isn't here, says Mom. We have an idea for how our family can help Piper's bedwetting, and it involves you. Me? Why? Well, it was kind of your idea in the first place. You inspired us to do a little research. I did? What are you talking about? And my parents tell me the idea, and it's the worst idea I've ever heard, even though I had the same idea for my first how-to topic. Turns out there really is an alarm to help some stop kids from peeing in their beds at night. My parents got one, and they want to clip it onto Piper's pajamas, and then it'll beep very loud if she has an accident. But that beeping would also wake up Cleo, which is not great because my parents already spent a really long time trying to get that baby to sleep through the night in her crib. So we'd like you to move in to Piper's room just for a couple weeks and let Piper sleep in your room so she can try out this alarm without waking everyone up. But she'll touch all my things and she'll pee in my bed. And we'll put a liner on the bed, says Dad. Two liners, adds Mom. I don't care. It's still gross. Someone else's pee is always worse than your own pee. How come Piper can't do my third grade math? How come Piper can do my third grade math, but she can't figure out how to go to the bathroom at night? Bedwetting is a phase that some kids go through, says mom, and we love Piper and we want to try to help her get better, a better night's sleep. Will you help us? Er, it's not my problem that Piper has a small bladder, but now I guess it is since I'm being kicked out of my own room because of her. I don't mind sharing a room with Cleo. I actually like the, that baby sister since she's not trying to lick me like certain other sisters do. I just don't want Piper touching my stuff with all of her booty cuties. <laughs> And I know she will. She's a, sn a stinky little sneak who gets away with everything. Okay, I grumble. But that, what if that alarm thing doesn't even work? It may not. If it doesn't help her start waking to use the toilet, we'll try something else. The room switch is temporary, Quinny. We appreciate your flexibility. I didn't think life could get any worse after what happened at school today. But I was wrong. P.U. Piper will be peeing in my bed at night and touching my things. Worst of all, how will I see into Hopper's room from Cleo and Piper's room? It's all the way on the other side of the house. 